Hi, I'm here with Morgan Castleberry, the telehealth coordinator for the Pulaski County School Systems uh, for the new telehealth system that has been implemented in Pulaski County Schools. And she's going to tell us a little bit about this new system. How are you today, Morgan? I'm good, Kelly. And our telehealth program is new to the schools this year. We received a grant for it, and it brought in my position to run the program, and it gave us all of the equipment. We do have two school nurses. We have one at the elementary school, and we have one that does the high school and middle school together. And we have equipment for both of those places. So with our equipment, we have a big cart set up with a laptop that has programming on it that we have, um, it's kind of like FaceTime, and you can see the doctor in the nurse's office. So a student comes in, they're not feeling well, and it's, you know, just something that is kind of minor that we can see a doctor with at school and get them all settled. They can come in, look at this laptop, and they see the doctor face to face. So along with our laptop, we also have a Bluetooth stethoscope. Every time you go to the doctor, you know, the first thing they do, listen to your heart, listen to your lungs. So we do have a stethoscope that we can record those heart and lung sounds. And as soon as the doctor comes on, we give them the code to it. They pick up their stethoscope that also comes with the equipment and they can listen to those heart and lung sounds. Along with that, we also have a Reisterscope, which is this really fancy piece of equipment that on one side has a camera so that whether it's myself or a nurse, whoever's doing the presentation, they can look into the ear or the nose, eyes, throat, any of these things of the child. Um, and the other side of it has different heads that interchange on it. So it's got, you know, the one with an otoscope. That's what looks, you know, in your ears and your nose at the hospital. And then we have one that's just a general head so that you can look at, you know, if there's a scrape on their arm that needs to be looked at or a rash or anything like that. Um, it can also look into the eyes, you know, the throat to get a full, you know, complete. The doctor can see everything they need to see. And then there's also a dermatological scope oh. um, that can attach to it. Big word to say, but it is a super magnified um, camera that you actually can put it to your head and see individual hairs. Oh. So it is that powerful. Um, so we really just with all of this equipment and with this grant we've gotten, we're hoping that we can some of these minor things that, you know, a child really needs to see a doctor for, but don't really want to take the whole day out of school or half a day out of school and parents having to get off work. It can kind of combat some of those things and let them still see a physician and stay in class and get that instructional time. Yeah, it really is kind of the doctor's visit of the future where, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to physically be at a doctor's office and you can just from where you are, you know, in this case, mm -hmm. a child in school and it's so important to stay in school um, or even the teachers, I think you've mentioned, can use this system and, you know, just take the time needed to have that appointment and then get back to, you know, business as usual. Um, this really has a number of benefits. I know you've mentioned um, other than time, probably financial as well. Um, yes, it is. As far as the billing side, that is a huge question I get a lot. Um, and it is billed the same as a regular doctor's appointment. So we run your insurance, anything not covered, the doctor bills for. But at the same time, if it's you know, some of these kids are constantly having to go and constantly you know, have an illness. They're missing school. So parents have to take them out of work. That, that financial is a huge thing. You can stay at work. And I would like to point out, too, um, that we are not trying to replace doctors here. We are not trying to have sick children sitting in the nurse's office, you know, children with high fevers or strep throat. That is not what we're combating. What we are here, what we're aiming to do is a lot of those kind of minor illnesses, whether it be ear infections or sinus infections um, a rash you know things like that that need to see a physician but aren't necessarily you know they're not contagious mm -hmm. those are the things we're trying to combat um, the we have done an appointment so far and it was a child with an earache and it's not contagious um, ear infections you know that's not anything that another child can catch but they came out of class I think a total of 45 minutes by the time we took the vital signs, got the heart and lung sounds recorded, did all the background work, and, you know, the doctor came in, spent 20, 30 minutes, asked him questions, looked in his ear, looked in his throat, and, you know, could kind of make a diagnosis and go from there. And sometimes you do, you know, in the case we did, she was worried, even though the child was not complaining about his throat hurting, that there might be, you know, he could have strep. I would, I'd rather, you know, do a strep test first. And in those cases, there might have to be follow-up. We try to avoid that, but sometimes... It just, 
it, you have to have a follow-up, and those are considered a continuance of the appointment. That's not a separate appointment. You don't have to go to the doctor's office that same day anyways and pay another fee. It goes along with it. But for the majority of what we're trying to aim at, if we even think a child has, say, for instance, the strep, we're not going to see that telemedicine. We're going to go ahead and not put other children's health at risk, and they'll, right. you know, be sent home. Right. You know, for people who aren't as familiar with the telehealth group, can you talk about a little bit about the organization you're with and how it functions and its, you know, part in all this? Sure. So we fall under the umbrella of the Georgia Partnership for Telehealth. It is a big organization. They're the ones that have centralized all of this, all of the schools that have this program. There are a lot of them in the state, especially these rural areas like ours. They kind of are the spearhead for this. That's where the grant came from. They are the ones responsible for getting doctors involved in the network. We had um, Dr. Bill with Dr. Bill's Kids in Cochrane. Um, Dr. Peebles and Dr. Maddox, I think, were already involved ahead of time. And then since we have come on board with GPT, Dr. Copaz, you know, they're, Dr. Copaz and Taylor Regional here in Hawkinsville really wanted to partner with us. And they have been great through, you know, getting all of the things here and getting their equipment so that, you know, we pulled them into telehealth as well, or GPT did. They, you know, got them involved and so that we were both allowed to you know, have this equipment and to get them into the network because you do have to be involved in their network for us to see. You. That's where all of the doctors we see is in the GPT network. There's over 200 of them that range from, you know, just pediatricians. They have, you know, adult meds. So like you said, we are trying to get it to where teachers can also utilize this. Okay. You know, that's, they don't have to get a sub. They can, you know, stay in. They don't have to miss school. Um, it's always hard, you know, with substitutes and, you know, just making sure that they just don't want to miss school either. So we are working with that and um, trying to get that up and running, but there are over 200, including specialists. So they can, so there are endocrinologists in the system if we have children with diabetes that need to see someone. There are, you know, asthma specialists. There are just a ton of, we well, can network, we're trying to, you have to do kind of some special tasks that we are in the process of doing to get involved with the Children's Health Care of Atlanta. Um, we are you know, working to get into that too in case we have any of those specialists that need to be seen because it is hard you know, sometimes to get to Atlanta or to get to Macon for some of these specialist visits. Yeah, and that's a big benefit, uh, especially in rural communities when you can have mm -hmm. such a long drive. Uh, and you have people, honestly, more people who might not be able to afford you know, things right. like that. Um, just to make sure people understand the terminology because sometimes telemedicine is used, sometimes telehealth is used. Could you just discuss the terminology a little bit, the words telehealth versus telemedicine? Oh, yes. They are pretty much interchangeable. You will see, you'll hear us sometimes, you know, that has been caused some confusion. People go, mm -hmm. I thought it was telehealth. And the telehealth versus telemedicine, it's really the same thing. They're interchangeable. Um, like my position, for instance, is the telehealth coordinator. But you'll see, you know, in our telemedicine enrollment packets, they're the same thing. Um, and if there are any questions in there, um, a lot of people, the packet that we have, you have to be enrolled in the program to be able to participate in the telemedicine. And that's just because, I mean, in the first packet you fill out, it is kind of long. It's, I think, seven pages front and back, which seems like, you know, a lot to fill out. But it's got in there, you know, it gives us permission. We have to have your permission to, you know, use your insurance. We don't want to have your child see a doctor and say they can run your insurance. And right. for whatever reason, you know, it they can't use that and you get billed for it. You know, we, do, we really do not want that to happen. Um, which one important thing, you know, kind of a side note there is we always call the parents first. Mm -hmm. So just like we had one where they wanted to see Dr. Copaz and Dr. Copaz wasn't in the office that day. That's their primary doctor. You know, it's the parent's choice. Well, I, I wanted to be seen today or I'd rather just carry him out there. Um, so that is always there. Parents will always be called first. Um, but the packet includes, you know, bill the authorization to build the insurance. And it's got, you know, you need that family history and the medical history. We are, you know, doing this as a regular doctor's appointment. So we don't need to do, you know, a sinus infection and the antibiotic they want to give them, the child's allergic to, you know, things like that. So it is very thorough, but it is a one-time thing as well. Once you fill it out for your child, the next year you'll just get a one-page update. You know, is there any new allergies? Is there any new medications they're taking? Anything that, you know, a doctor would really need to know if they were to see them again. Yeah, and the paperwork really is necessary mm -hmm. to you know, ensure patient privacy and, and permission for those things because it's just like going to a doctor. You mm -hmm. have to fill out a number of pages to make sure people's health 
uh, concerns are taken into account and uh, financial billing concerns as well. So it makes sense that it is for the benefit of the families. Right. And then, you know, you mentioned the privacy. That's been mm -hmm. a huge question I've gotten to. It's, yes. You know, well, if we're filling out this big form and it's got all of my child's medical history and it's got what they're allergic to and everything, you know, any kind of, if they're, you know, ADHD or if they have you know, anything on there, that's been a huge question is who sees this? You know, is everyone going to know, all, you know, some things just are sensitive and you don't want to be seen. And with our um, paperwork, they are all under lock and key in a separate filing cabinet from even the school nurses. Because we fall under, right now, we have to abide by FERPA guidelines, which are educational, that gives, you know, your child and you, and that only a parent or guardian can see, you know, educational um, information. So we fall under those with stuff being in their files. But we also fall under HIPAA, which is the medical privacy. Um, so that is why they are separate, because... There's been, you know, kind of a question of, what well, does telemedicine fall under the schools or does it fall under, you know, the medical? Because there are a few different guidelines there. So for now, we are just following both of them to cover our bases and make sure that, you know, we want the student's privacy to be just like it would in a daughter's office. No one gets to see them. I can't even just go pull a telemedicine file like, hey, I want to go see what so-and-so. That's mm -hmm. not how it goes at all. If there's an appointment... We pull their file. Um, we have forms that say there's a pre-clinic form that gets any kind of information. If there's anything the parent wants specifically asked, we'll put it on that you know pre-clinic form. Um, we have one for during the visit so that we can put all their vital signs on it. We can put what their chief complaint is. Everything the doctor says goes on it, and look, that way we can fax it to the doctor. And they have everything they need going into an appointment, That all those vital signs and things like that. And then there's a post form so that we can send um, that parents can know what's going on. And the post form has nothing. I mean, it will have, it won't have any medications prescribed, anything, anything going home with the child just in general will not have anything sensitive on it. We will call and give that information to the parent. But as soon as an appointment is over, any kind of paperwork that is went along with it goes into that student's file. And the second the appointment's over, I go back and put it into the, um, filing cabinet, lock it back up. And it is not, you know, it can't be touched again. We can only use them if they pertain to the medical case at hand. Right. And you mentioned the file security. I'd like you to also discuss, you'd mentioned how not only are the files secure, you know, there's so much hacking and concerns about, you know, internet uh, privacy invasion these days. Could you tell us a little bit about how the actual telehealth connection when you are connecting from the school uh, through like a, something like a webcam to a doctor's office, how that line is secure. Um, yes. So I mentioned when I was kind of going over our equipment that it's basically like FaceTime. That the student can sit, you know, see the doctor, talk to the doctor. Um, and even though it is set up very similar to that, it is very easy to use. It is a special program, and the software has been designed by the people at Georgia Partnership for Telehealth. It's called, I think, Jabber. And they have made through those measures to make sure that it is a safe connection, that it has, you know, extra, it's not just, you know, a few barriers. There's plenty of things that can, like, keep people from being able to come in on those. So they have that, um, and all of the apps are especially designed from the Partnership for Telehealth. Um, so we, there are three of them. There's the one to actually do the face-to-face -face, um, connectivity. There's the one that works with our stethoscope, and there's the one that works with um, our scope itself. And all three of those have been designed to be very safe, um, even for just the heart and lung sounds. You have to have a session ID given to you to even open, to even be able to see anything that's been recorded by that stethoscope. So... Yeah. It is very safe. They have taken, the partnership for telehealth has been fabulous. I feel like they have thought of everything and they have taken a lot of steps to ensure that it is just as safe as if you were going into the daughter's office. I, I imagine HIPAA parameters would be pretty stringent. It sounds yes. like y'all have really done everything you can to make sure uh, priority is taken with you know, people's privacy and people's information. Well, and even with the appointments, you know, we, you know, as hard as it sounds to do, we shut down the nurse's clinic for that amount of time um, so that when they're actually speaking with a doctor, um, they have complete privacy there. There's not other students coming in saying, oh, so-and-so's in here for A, B, and C, or, mm -hmm. well, that doctor said that they had you know, this. None of that. They, no one's allowed into there during the actual time they're speaking with the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, the only person that, you know, will be allowed is I usually present the patients. The nurses are in there in case, you know, they want them to feel their throats or mm -hmm. anything that needs, you know, I prefer anything the doctor asks them to do. We have both 
both of our nurses, our elementary school nurse is Mary John Mooring, and our high school middle school nurse is Jody Kemp, and they are both fabulous. They are great with the kids, and I mean, they are the nurses. You know, they are the ones with the medical experience. So. I'm not trying to, you know, do anything when I have them, and they are great resources, and they're in there to do those. You know, I want you to fill their lymph nodes. Or I want you to check their pulse for this long. Our nurses have the medical background, and they do that. Um, but parents are also, if a parent wants to come in, they are more than welcome to come and sit in on, you know, any of the appointments. If they want to use the telehealth, mm -hmm. but they still want to be involved, that is completely up to them. They will never be told that they can't sit in on their child's appointment. This again is the Pulaski County school system that has this new program um, for people in other counties. You know, what are some hopes y'all have for other counties that maybe don't have a program like this at this time? Well, this is becoming a huge deal. It's like you said earlier that, you know, this telemedicine kind of in general is, you know, kind of the doctor's visits of the future. A lot of rural areas are jumping on and trying to get this program and get it up and running. It started in Berrien County. Um, that's our the liaison that we had, and now she's been promoted. She's a big she's big into the Georgia Partnership for Telehealth. She is one of the, you know the original people that had it, and it was only you know the one county. I think they had one you know hospital involved in it, and since then we went to a conference in November that really you know kind of gave those you know, skills to make it be a success and to do the best we can to get our program running you know, very well. And Bleckley County has this program, Dodge County has this program, and I honestly don't remember. They said that there was, I think, over 50 counties, now, especially rural areas in Georgia that have this. And you know, like I said, there's over 200 doctors in this network. So I just think that you know, we have all this technology at hand. You know, we might as well use it and use it to the benefit of these children, especially with things, you know, it seems we have a great hospital here, but there are still barriers to whether it be transportation or like you said, financial issues, just, you know, or sometimes it's just a matter of a parent can't take off work. You know, some jobs, right. if you leave for any amount of time, you don't get paid that day. And, you know, that's just not always an option for some people. So for some of these things that kids are just, you know, they can't pay attention in class because, you know, they've got an earache that they've had for two weeks and they just haven't been able to get to a hospital yet, even though we have a great one here. This allows them to see Dr. Copaz or see Dr. Bill um, or whoever is in, you know, that they can get to in the network and get those problems fixed. And it's just a huge benefit to these children in our area. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about the doctors and your relationships with them, your coordinating? Because obviously y'all have had to have, I'm sure, many long conversations to set yes. this up with them. Well, and it all started, um, we had someone at the hospital is actually the one who brought it to our attention that, hey, there's this grant, they've got this telemedicine, I really think it could be great, you know, so that kind of got the ball rolling with us. Yeah, Karen and, McLeod, I yes, believe. Yeah. Yes, Miss Karen. Um, and she, you know, was like, you know, I think this would be great, it'd be something, you know, we'd like to partner with too. And, you know, so that's been, we've really tried to focus on, we really want to use, you know, Taylor Regional, we want to use Dr. Copaz. You know, a lot of our kids see Dr. Copaz here, and she, they have worked really hard to get, you know, the technology and the equipment on their end. End, and we are still, you know, we got our equipment mid-September and she got hers, I think, sometime in October. And there's been, you know, trying to troubleshoot and there's been some issues, but overall, you know, we're, we're getting there, we're working towards it and they have been great as far as, you know, when we have our community, um, we have a quarterly community advisory meeting. And, you know, Miss Karen came, Dr. Copaz came, so they're really trying to work with us to make this thing be successful. And, I, you know, I really think that's important is they, you know, it's not just us. It's not just, you know, wanting our students to see this. You know, they're, the doctors play a huge role in whether this program will be successful or not. You know, they're the ones that are going to actually see the kids. And it's up to them, you know, and they have been great as far as, you know, we have been out there and, you know, spoke with her about, you know, what she likes to see in it. And we're still, you know, working through a lot of kinks. But, um, you know, we're really excited that they are as excited as we are about what, you know, this could the possibilities that this program could entail. And then also, you know, Dr. Copaz, Taylor Regional, they're, you know, they're huge. And, you know, we also obviously want to stay local, you know, as much as we can. But then, you know, we also have, like I said, Dr. Bill, Dr. Peebles and Eastman, Dr. Maddox goes back and forth with Cochran and Hawkinsville. You know, they are also in this network. So we also want to utilize them. We have a lot of students that, you know, if that's their, we want primary care physicians to be seen if possible, you know, whether it be Dr. Copaz, Dr. Bill, um, we really just want to utilize all the resources because all of these doctors in our community 
are just fabulous and they you know they want what's best for these kids they work really well with these kids you know we have a lot of great doctors around here so we just want to utilize you know all of the resources we can to just keeping these kids healthy and keeping them you know where they can get the education that that they can receive yeah I mean obviously the program sounds like it has a lot of potential mm -hmm. but would you mind sharing like what some of those challenges y'all are facing are Oh, yes. And I think the biggest challenge is just that's why we're doing this special is the biggest challenge I've seen is that people just aren't really sure what it is, you know, and I have I'm to do that, too. You know, you hear something new. You're like, hmm, I'm not really sure about that. So you just kind of, you know, push it to the side and, you know, seeing even with just the two appointments we've had, you know, those possibilities come into fruition and seeing how good they it can be and like having it work even if we do have a few things you know to work out it just shows that it can work and just opens up even more possibilities for okay well once we you know now that we've done this we know what to work on you know it just adds more and more possibilities it just grows on itself so um, you know, we really just want to get the word out there and we're trying to publicize it. And, you know, if people have questions, instead of just, you know, pushing it to the side, you know, come ask us. Um, you can get in touch, you know, whether you're asking at the school, they can give you, you know, my information. Um, I do have an email address. It is telemedicine um, at pulaski.k12.ga.us. Um, that's the, all the school emails. Um, there's also a telehealth tab on the Pulaski County Schools like website. It also has my email address on it. Um, I check my email. It comes to my phone, so I see it, you know, quickly. I can respond quickly, um, and just getting those questions answered and getting people comfortable with wanting to use this program. So, you know, y'all do have a variety of challenges, some of which y'all will have to work out. Uh, but, you know, what are some ways that you know, different people can help, be you a parent who has a child in the system, or maybe you're just someone in the community. Maybe you don't ha even have a child in school, but you know, what's some ways, what are some ways some people can get involved and help make this program grow? Um, it really goes back to, again, just word of mouth and to publicizing it. Um, some of the other challenges that we have as far as, you know, making sure our connections are good, um, and that when we get on there that you can actually see and hear the other person. You know, those are things we work with with our school IT who have also been great working with getting all these set up. We can call into the partnership for telehealth pretty much at any time and just call in and do that, you know, FaceTime, just connect with them and kind of troubleshoot anything. So the biggest thing that, the, you know, the community can do and the parents and people in the school system is really just to you know be patient with us. It is there are going to be questions. I'm fully aware of that. Um, I am prepared to answer those. Or you know if I personally don't know the answer, get with the people at partnership with telehealth and get those answers. Um, so just you know fill in the packets out. They did all go home at the beginning of the school year for the elementary school and the middle and high school all got packets. Um, the enrollment packets. I think we sent them out. We waited a little bit later um, because we, at the very beginning of the year, I had not been hired yet and we didn't have a nurse. She was brought in a week after school started, so we didn't want to send them home with no one to return those packets to. Um, but now they have all been sent out to them too. So really just, you know, signing those kids up and, you know, if I know it's new, you know, I always call you before there's ever an appointment so that if they come in, you know, I can just call you and it's a lot easier to answer questions and tell you how it's going to work and, you know, invite you in if you, you know, still just aren't sure and want to see it. It's a lot easier than trying to, okay, well, you know, the nurse called and this child will be a perfect candidate, but they're not enrolled. So we got to figure out how to get, because usually we've been sending stuff. We've had a few that we thought would be great candidates and we send the enrollment packet home and it never comes back. You know, there's no... There's not, especially with some of our younger kids, there's not really uh, anyone to make sure it gets to the parents and make sure it gets back. So we really just need, you know, the support for it right now. And I know that this is not going to be something that everyone just completely jumps on board with from the beginning. And is like, oh, yeah, that's great. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I've had a lot of, I've heard a lot of, well, it sounds great in theory, but is it actually going to work in practice? Mm -hmm. So really just, you know, kind of giving us that trust a little bit, you know, give us just a little bit, see how it works. Um and kind of, you know, make your decisions after, you know, from there. But just to get the word out there, kind of get, try to give us a little bit of your trust. Um, I promise that these nurses, these doctors, myself, we all have the children's best interests at heart. 
Um, everyone we have worked with so far, it has just been, you know, we love it. We want to keep them healthy. We want to keep them in school, whether it be, you know, nurses, our teachers at the school are great. So we know they want these kids to feel good and to be there ready to learn so that they can do, you know, their jobs. It's just, it's really a team effort for all of this. And that's what we're really trying to do. We're not trying to, you know, like I said earlier, we're not trying to take them out and, you know, just doctor on them and parents not know. We're not trying to, you know, take them out of class for, it's really trying to be a team effort to get parents and these physicians and these educators that are all doing so great. When you get them together, it's, it's just going to be, it's just fabulous. You know, there's, like we said, there's so many opportunities there um, for our teachers can keep teaching our physicians can make sure all these kids are healthy and you know it's just a big team effort so that's yeah. my biggest thing for parents and community is just to give it a chance um, ask questions if you have them I'm always up for questions I would love you know another there's still some confusion it is new I do understand that so ask those questions and just try to you know have a positive outlook about it and see how it goes now, I know after this year, you know, your funding sources mm -hmm. will be changing. You won't have the same uh, grant in place. Can you talk a little bit about any ideas you all have about funding it in the future and keeping this program operating? Um, sure. So, like you said, it is, we did go ahead and pay with our grant. We have our equipment. The equipment's here. It's in place. That's not something that anytime soon we should have to, you know, unless okay. something just drastic happens. We shouldn't have to, it's not something you replace every year or every other year. You know, we've got our scopes, we've got all the equipment in place. Um, there are some fees you pay into to be in the network with the Partnership for Telehealth, and we did pay those for the first two years. There was enough in our budget that we went ahead and, you know, had those for two years okay. because, you know, the partnership, they kind of, you know, tell you the first year you really have to get it going. You have to get people vested in it and seeing how good of a thing it is. And so we're really just hoping that, um, at the end of our two years, we've got the equipment in place. We're hoping that it will have, you know, reached the, at least part of the potentials that we know it can reach and that, you know, whether it be different groups in the community or um, for the little side funding that, you know, we do need that, you know, maybe they'll be with the school. They'll be, if we can find some areas in the budget, if it's helping, you know, if it's bringing in. I do know that Georgia Partnership for Telehealth is trying to at some point along the road, you know, they're working on it right now to get to where even schools, you know, the doctors get like a regular doctor's visit. So they still get the, you know, they still get paid for you know, their services. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to make it to where at some point in the near future that schools can, you know, have some of it too, that we are using them. It is like a clinic um, so that the schools to help with that funding. They are, I'm telling you, the P Partnership for Telehealth is fabulous. They are great. They are really forward thinking. They are trying to help us because it is hard for these smaller schools. You know, and that's another big question I've had, you know, how's it going to stay in five years? Um, and hopefully, you know, if it's working well and, you know, we're seeing these kids and we're keeping kids in class and we have, you know, less nurses visits because they're staying healthier, you know, all of those things, it'll help, you know, clear up some of the funds, you know, hopefully. And hopefully we can bring some others on board to, you know, want to support it and to, you know, help us and right. generously, you know, help us to sustain our program. Right. I know on the uh, clinic side, you'd mentioned the fact that y'all have these services at the school might give the school uh, some authorization to receive money for being a location mm -hmm. that this is at. But yeah, you, I know you've mentioned to me that uh, the location um, might be eligible uh, for money since y'all do have these services at the schools. Um, you know, sometimes locations that house these services um, qualify to receive a certain amount of compensation for, you know, having those services. Um, so that might be one source. Um, and of course, you know, there's hopes um, that communities might get involved. Pulaski Tomorrow is the organization that actually first proposed the original grant um, that has the telehealth system going. So maybe there's the potential for another grant in the future. We, yes, and that is, you know, part of, that is one of my roles as the telehealth coordinator as well, is we do know of a couple of other grants that um, other schools have used to start getting their programs up and running. So there are new things all of the time. Um, we've been kind of you know, asking about things and that usually they open up in the spring, different grants. So obviously our first, 
you know, kind of line of effort there would be to look for those grants. You know, we don't want to, okay. you know, try to go and just, hey, you know, we want to, we need to sustain our program. We really want to have it to where it could eventually be, you know, self-sustaining, especially if they could somehow get it worked out to where, you know, like you said, we have a site and, you know, we can receive money for doing, say, different these different appointments. You know, we hope that's coming in the future. But, you know, even if it doesn't, we're still wanting to look at other grants. Um, mm -hmm. And the biggest expense of the grant that we used for the grant we just got was for that technology. You know, it is a lot to get all of it in. Um, so that was a very, you know, large portion of it. So okay. if we could find other grants, um, that's something that, you know, I'll be looking into. Um, Ms. Vonnie Berryhill, she is with Family Connections. She is huge into the telemedicine, too. Um, she is who, you know, I report to and we collaborate and we're trying to, you know, look for things. So between the two of us, we are both, you know, hoping that there will be a lot of these grants opening back up that we can apply for. And I mean, so far we have, you know, they told us it will be, it might be a little slow to begin with. And we've done two appointments since we've had our equipment in two months. So we're really hoping that it's going to continue to pick up and that with, if it continues to be successful, there will be other grants that you know we can get and we can self-fund. That's our whole goal is to be able to sustain it on our own and to sustain the program without having to, you know, outsource. Right, because the, some of the costs would include um, the telehealth coordinators, mm -hmm. such as yourself. I imagine an additional cost with the nurses, or what are some of those other costs? A lot of them are just the supplies. You know, we have, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously you want to be, you know, for health concerns. So, you know, we have the otoscope tip that goes in ears and the nose. You know, when you go to the doctor, they put the little black tip on it. You know, mm -hmm. there's things like that that you don't really think of. You have to buy those tips. You have to replace um, them. Exactly. Yeah. And we, you know, want to have those, the alcohol wipes for, you know, the dermatological scope you know it actually can sit on your skin and right. magnify so you need you know you want to make sure those are clean and sterile at, right. with every single student um, and then we also even just with the you know tips we have the you know kind of not bigger but like the average size and then we also bought some that were a little bit smaller because with these kindergartners and first graders and some yeah. of the smaller ones Pretty you dope. know especially if they're coming in with an earache you want to be able to you know it's probably going to be a little sore in there. And that's another thing that we really, you know, have we practiced with it a lot. Um, both of the nurses have practiced with it. I practice with it, you know, so that we can get what we need to see without, you know, we want to have, we want them to have good experiences that we don't want to scare them or have them scared of us or scared of doctors. So we have those, um, the paper to print, you know, we get the big reams of paper. When you have a seven page enrollment packet, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, we've printed, printed flyers so that, you know, when I speak, I speak at different places, just really trying to get the word out there. I've went to PTO last night at the elementary school. I've been to a middle school PTO. Um, the elementary school had a meet and treat where they had a lot of different organizations with little booths set up. So I got rolled my cart down there. Um, so a lot of, you know, just those things to sustain the program are the only really other costs that, you know, we've really been seeing um, that and then the fees to be in the partnership for telehealth, which again, have been paid for two years, but you know, once that runs out, we will have to go back to paying those. Um, and then the only other fee we really have is we are kind of in the process of trying to get CLIA certified, which means that you can do certain, you know, basic lab tests in your clinic. So we are really just trying to get it to do um, like the rapid strep tests and the rapid flu tests. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even, you know, that could be super useful, even if, you know, we're not seeing, you know, if they, if we can do the strep test and know then, we don't even have to, you know, just, they have strep, you know, they need to go see the doctor, you know, we don't want them here, you know, being, unless the doctor can see them like instantly, which, you know, isn't really realistic. They're very busy out there, you know, just like, you know, everyone. So, but the flu test, the um, strep test, you know, we're trying to get those for, we wouldn't even have to send them to the hospital after that, but it's mostly just supplies that, and the fees to stay into the program will all be the only thing we have to keep sustained. Right, right. Um, I know similar to costs, uh, insurance is a mm -hmm. big concern of uh, most parents and people hearing about this. Uh, I know you touched on insurance, but you know there's really a variety of concerns people usually bring up uh, with the insurance process with this. Could you just address some of those common questions you get? Well, the most common is just any appointment I use, you know, will, am I paying for this out of pocket? And the answer to that is no. As long, I mean, almost every insurance, you, most children have a primary care physician. And if your child is one of those with a primary care, we'll always try to get them in with their primary physician first. Um, 
and they run the insurance. I mean, it, it literally is like going into their office. They run it. You know, if you normally, if you go to the doctor's office, if you go see Dr. Copaz in her office and your insurance covers this much and you pay this copay, that'll be the exact same if you do a telemedicine visit. It works the exact same. Um, for if it's not your primary care, that's kind of where, you know, the line where it gets kind of iffy comes in because that really is just up to your insurance. You know, some insurances will let you cover, say, 10 or 5 other um, appointments that are not with your primary care. Right. And then some won't let you see it at all. And then, you know, there's even some children we've seen that, you know, don't have necessarily a primary care physician. So it really just comes down to your insurance. Um, and... You know, you, that's something that can just be asked, you know, really quickly. We are not going to ever call your insurance company and right. say, you know, that's kind of goes back. That is a whole other set of, you know, can of worms to open. But um, if you have any, you know, questions, sometimes you, know, you might even can call your doctor and ask them, you know, hey, my primary is on vacation this week. You know, can I use your office? You know, will it cover my insurance? Those are questions you can always ask. But right. for the most part, since we do have so many local doctors, when I was putting forms, and you know, we kind of tallied to kind of see, you know, how many we had with different doctors and all, just so we knew, kind of to be able to say what to expect. Well, we had this many of our students go see Dr. Crapaz and this many see Dr. Bill. So since we do have almost all of their primary cares here, I don't foresee insurance being an issue with students. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be more of with if teachers want to utilize it, which we I've talked to um, Lauren, mm -hmm. the our lady we ask all of our questions to at Georgia Partnership for Telehealth, and she is you know, working with me to get how, even with the teachers, like she, I've asked her today and she said she would get with me by next week with how to go about that insurance with the adults and with the teachers. So, but yes, for children, it, as long as you're seeing your primary care, there is no question whatsoever about insurance. And then if you can't see them, that's where you kind of get into, you know, we can work with you. Yeah, because I think some of the fears some parents would immediately have is, am I going to get the bill mm -hmm. for something that I wasn't expecting? Right. But that's not going to happen. No, and even with, you know, we haven't had issues um, with our program so far. And, you know, I've asked multiple times just, you know, because I've had people ask me, even the well care, um, Medicaid, Medicare, TRICARE, all of that. I mean, if it's covered with your doctor normally, it will be covered through telemed telemedicine too. It's okay. the same as an appointment, yes. Well, I know you've mentioned the benefits for students, the potential benefits for, for teachers, uh, or certainly the benefits for teachers, and even the benefits for parents of this program. Um, it sounds like this program really has a lot of potential um, to help communities in which it you know, is implemented. Yes, it definitely does. Um, you know, we're looking at the health visits you know, themselves, actually keeping them healthy and doing the actual visits. Um, it saves, you know, the parents from having to get out, they can stay at work, um, you know, all of that potential. But then there's also even some, you know, hopefully in the future, mm -hmm. even being able to use it with um, educational benefits. I know at our high school, there is a health pathway. So having those students that, you know, if you can bring in, say they're learning about, um, I don't know, the endocrine system. They're looking at, you know, maybe they've talked about diabetes and they're looking at that system, you know, bringing in one of those endocrinologists, even just to have them on the screen to, you know, speak with the class and kind of, you know, give side notes or, you know, main things they look for. I mean, there's just things like that that you could bring in um, people just to, you know, give the lectures or just rolling our cart down and being able to use the equipment because, you know, that's a huge, there's a telehealth, I think it's at ABAC that their nurses have a um, telehealth, like, side pathway that they can like go through um, there was someone that came and spoke at our conference about that she had gotten I think it was a certificate so you know for those in our health pathways you know especially at the high school since they have a specific health pathway that you can go through you know already kind of being familiar with telehealth and you know being able to go through that and to go to into college saying hey I did this in high school you know I had a great you know health science teacher and then she also let us you know use telehealth equipment to kind of get familiar you know that'd even be good just educational you know right. for those students so there is a lot of potential and kind of strange ways or even you know the kindergartners that are constantly sticking things in their ears and all you know Miss Mary had said you know at one point she had I think she had a lot that you know that was kind of an issue sometimes so being able to go and show them their ears and say you know you don't want to put anything in your ears you know different th different ways that we can push it and use it to make just it more benefit, interactive yes huh? and just to, to benefit these children in any way it can yeah that's great well can you tell us a little bit of just why you do this on a personal note I well I always loved school 
from little all the way up. So I invested in education and then I have, um, my degrees are in biology and genetics and I was pre-med. So I am hoping to one day in the future be a doctor and be a physician. Wow. So I have the education side, I have the medicine side. And, you know, when I graduated and saw this position open, I just thought it was wonderful because, I mean, I know we keep just harping on the potential of things, but I think this is kind of where we're going in the future, you know, not even just in our school systems, but in medicine in general, you know, there's going to be a lot of, well, they need to see this, this specialist in this state. So let's just, you know, connect and use telehealth to do it. Like, I think that we're going towards that direction. And so to be able to be in the school system that I grew up in, you know, I went to all three of these schools. I know a lot of these children, um, my mother was a teacher here for a while. My aunt currently teaches here. I've still got teachers that I had that are here that, you know, are my favorites. So, you know, to be able to work with the staff, these children that I know a lot of, and even students I don't know, you know, they see me and, you know, they've kind of seen me working with the equipment and they just get so excited. And to keep them healthy, you know, that's kind of what I want to do with my life anyways is, you know, I want to be a physician. I want to keep people healthy and happy and living their lives. And, you know, I'm not naive and thinking that, you know, you can just have everyone healthy 100% of the time, but anything you can do to help, you know, especially in this time while I'm kind of in between uh, my undergraduate and hopefully going to medical school, you know, and being able to interact with all these children and our great educational staff that we have at our schools is really why I chose to do, you know, why I applied for this job and I am loving it so far. You know, we're trying to get it up and running and there's still those snags, but you know, when you do finally do an appointment and you see how much it helps this child and they were in there for 45 minutes and haven't been back to the nurse, you know, mm -hmm. since that time, or we did, we can do, you know, prescription refills and, you know, keeping them just on track and just moving has just really been very rewarding. Yeah. It sounds like you're tailor made for the job. <laughs> I like, I've, I've put a hundred percent of my effort into it. So I just, hope to see I see the potential and I know what good it can do and you know I do love it I do love both sides of it but it's really about just keeping these kids in school and you know keeping people healthy and being able to encompass all of that into one system I guess mm -hmm. yeah well we're about to go and see a demonstration of this telehealth system because I, I know I've seen it before and really seeing it kind of shows you uh, how impressive and uh, how helpful it can be. Could you explain just a little bit about what we're about to see? Um, yes, so I'm going to have, I have a third grader that I have brought in and I'm just gonna have her kind of sit and it's gonna be more of like a mock appointment so that, cause, you know, I still think mm -hmm. I can say it all day long, but I still think parents are just kind of worried, you know, well, what if I don't know they're doing this? Or what if I don't, they don't tell me, you know, what the doctor says or what exactly are they sticking in my child's ear? You know, mm -hmm. we did have the misconception at one point that um, our high school nurse, a middle schooler had come and said that they wouldn't even take the packet home because nobody was putting a camera down their throat. They thought they were going to have to swallow a camera to oh see, like when we said we could see in your throat. And that is, we do not do invasive things. I'd like to go ahead and put that on the record. Yeah. We will not be invasive in doing things like that. Um, but just kind of, you know, that misconception. So, you know, I think that until you actually see it and you're like, oh, that's all it is. You know, I think people kind of also envision this huge, scary, you know, telehealth machine. And it's a laptop, it's some scopes, it's a regular stethoscope. Um, and when you see it, it's really, oh, okay, so that's what they're gonna be doing. So yeah. that's what I just really like to do, is kind of show how it goes down, how all of the equipment looks, um, you know, and what we really do with it. Yeah, well, thank you so much for talking with us so far. And let's take a look at what's next in how the telehealth system works. So this is our demonstration over how our telehealth program works. I kind of just wanted to show the equipment, um, kind of do a run through step by step of, you know, what we do. So we have Meredith Abney with us. She is a third grader here at Pulaski County Elementary School. You want to wave to them? So this is Meredith. And so let's say Meredith comes to Nurse Mary. That's our nurse at the elementary school and says, you know, my ear hurts, you know, really bad. Um, so we'll, she'll call me and I will call her mama, Miss Creasy, and say, you know, hey Creasy, this is Morgan, I'm with telehealth. Um, Meredith is in here, she's complaining about an earache really bad. She says her, you know, has her nose been around or anything? And, you know, mom will, do, we can see a physician at school. Would you like her to see a physician in the nurse's office? So at that point, her mother can either say, you know, no, I'm really not comfortable with that, I don't want her to see that, or she'll say, yes, you know, we'd love to see, we see Dr. Copaz. So if we can see Dr. Copaz today, let her see her. If not, you know, we don't want to see, that's our primary doctor. That's who we prefer to see. Or 
she can say, you know, we see Dr. Copaz, but whoever you can get her in with, just let her see someone. Any of those options are completely up to the parent. It's always up to you before we do anything else. We have to have your permission before I even call to try to schedule an appointment. So her mom says, yes, I'd like her to see Dr. Copaz. I um, mean, if you can, I'll ask some questions as far as, you know, how long has her ear been hurting? And she might say, well, this is just, I'm the first time I'm hearing it, or it might've been going on for a week. You know, whatever those, that situation is, I'll get that history from you. Um, does she have a history of you know, ear infections or ear aches or sinus infections, anything like that? Um, we'll just do a run through of whatever her symptoms are, get your permission, and then we'll relay all of this to the doctor. So once we have permission, she's enrolled, we call out and she has a 10 o'clock appointment. So about 9.30, We'll call her in. Um, our nurse is not here with us today, but either nurse that will take all of their vital signs um, from height and weight, their um, you know respiratory functions, pulse, uh, blood pressure. They'll do all of that. We have one single form. Um, I do think I have one with us. We can show it in a little bit, but um, it's got I mean really everything: family history, what are they allergic to, all of these different things. And once we have it completely filled out, we fax it to the doctor so that they're ready to go. We also have our stethoscope that I was speaking of. I mean, you can see it looks just like a regular stethoscope at a hospital. So I would come on and I'd go to our app that we had to use it. And you know, Meredith, I'm gonna take your heart and lung sounds, okay? And there's, um, in the program, it has the different setups to do. There's four main heart sounds and then there's six or seven, six to eight um, lung sounds. And it kind of depends on the appointment. You know, if they're in here for a rash, we're probably not taking every single one of those. But she's here for an ear infection. The doctor's probably going to want to hear all of those heart sounds all the lungs to make sure she's not, you know, congested, anything like that. So it is up to the appointment. But nine times out of ten, we'll take heart and lung sounds because most of the time, that's the first thing you do in a doctor's office. They want to hear those sounds. So, you know, we'll tell her. She'll be able to see on the screen. Um, I can even pull that up real quick. So once we get to that point, we have our app here. This is where you have to generate a certain ID. This is kind of where that safety comes into play at. Um, it already gave me an ID. There's a four letter um, pin that you have to give to the doctor. So no one can just, you know, come in and say, well, oh, I want to hear, you know, not that's a huge sensitive thing, but anything that we do with them, we still want it to be very private and very just their doctor's appointment. So even like other doctors, you can't have a random pediatrician from say Atlanta coming on saying I want to look at you know what are they treating this child for you have to have the four digit pin that we send that's on our form that we send is there so you know we'll listen and it tells us you know which our nurses and myself have been trained we know exactly how to do it but just in case you forget it kind of gives you you know where to place it and all and it's just like normal we'll say I'm going to take your heart rate okay Mary Mary and I'm going to find a good one now be real quiet okay we're going to record you. And just like that, we've recorded one of the heart sounds. And then you have on here, you just go to the drop down menu. It's got all four of the main heart sounds and all the different lung sounds. So whatever the doctor wants, we can go through. You click each one, record each sound, and have those done. This is also something we do in that 30 minutes prior to have everything ready for the doctor. We want it to be as quick and as simple as possible so that we've got all vitals, heart and lungs, all of that is done. So now, and it kind of depended on what it's for, um, for an earache like this, this isn't something that's contagious. Um, if she comes in at eight o'clock in the morning and her appointment's not until say noon, we'll go ahead and have all of this done and she can go back to class. So you're not missing, instead of like being at, in the actual office where, you know, she's got to sit there in the waiting room and if they're running behind, you know, just all of that. She gets to go back to class now. And again, this is where it goes back to, if it's something we think is contagious or something, you know, emergency or needs to be handled right then, we wouldn't use that for a telemedicine. But for an earache, we can get all of her stuff. She can go back, get another class or two in and just bring her back in for her appointment. So once we get to her appointment, I'll get out of our stethoscope. We have our fancy webcam here. Right now, just because we're doing a demonstration video, I have it just straight on her, but normally it sits right up at the top. It sees me and it sees her and anything our nurse does. So, you know, she's in for an ear infection. A lot of times, you know, the doctor might say, well, I need you to feel her lymph nodes along, you know, her throat. And it's got, you know, a fancy name to it. And um, that's when we'll get Nurse Mary 
anything truly medical or you know whether it's palpating you know, that's when they feel it on your throat it's called palpating and if they want that done or you know they want them to we had an appointment that they want to check the pulses at different spots throughout from like head to toe all that our nurses will do that and they'll be able to we can you know our camera picks up it moves um, if they want to actually see it done or they can sit there you know watch them to make sure they're feeling in the right places and our nurses will do any of that and then once they're ready they really direct us but this is our scope um, as you can see this side let's see if I can get it it turns on and this side is a screen this is where it shows the side that I can see and then we have another app when I swap it on here we'll show it momentarily but when you put it onto the camera everything I see on my screen so everything I'm looking at on Meredith here is shown up on my screen and on the computer screen and whatever's on my screen is also on the doctor's screen so that they can see it too and it just dings that we have it connected but this is one of our tips as you can see it looks just like what they put in your ears and nose at the doctor's office I went ahead and pulled a tip out we have the little tips for it they get changed with every student even if you know if we go to her ears to her nose we might even swap them there you know just kind of depending on you know the student especially if you know sometimes you have some earwax in your ear you know we don't want to put earwax in someone's nose so we have plenty of these tips we're very sterile um you just put our tip on come here Mayor. and say it's her right ear is hurting we can just go in and I don't have it on my screen right now and but I can look into her eardrum and I can see all in her ear the doctor will be able to see it you know she can look in those canals and say oh your ears really red it's swollen you know trying to make a you know, diagnosis through our telehealth but this one can also go up in the nose it can go in the ears and this is one of our head tips and then we also have I mentioned just the general scope and they're all just on the same one scope. It's all just one thing. And we rotate those out. So this one is just, it's just a circular. It's just general. This is what we look in throats with. As I, I mentioned earlier, there was some slight confusion. Some kids thought that we might actually put things in their throats. That is not the case. We do nothing invasive. We have our camera here. Can you open your mouth for me, Mayor? Mayor? And stick your tongue out and say, ah. You know we can look we can see on the screen you know we might have to use a tongue depressant it goes on the very end just so we can look into that throat if the doctor needs to see it um, our general scope can also see you know can I hold your hand please you know say she's got a rash right here she went out to recess and come in and they think she might be allergic to something there's a rash if that's what she's in here for you know we can put it to where instead of just putting it up to the webcam we can hold our scope to it and they can see you know up close what this rash looks like if they're thinking you know kind of what it is so we have that scope as well and it does not actually touch we do still clean it after every time just you know to be on the safe side but it never actually touches in the mouth on the skin we do nothing invasive in our clinic so we have that one and then our final tip that I talked about earlier is our derm our dermatology scope and now when it cuts on, this one is one that is very high-powered magnified. And it can I hold your hand again, please? You know, you're looking at something, whether they want to see it up close for, I don't know what reasons they would, it goes to the actual skin. And it lights up, and it is highly magnified. Like, you can see, like, I can see her little freckle, and it's about this big on my screen. And even, like, you can look into the hair with it. Um, and when you put this into the hair, I'll try to see if it will pull up. It, you can see individual hairs. So I know no one likes to think about things like lice but you know a lot of times that's a very just kind of inconvenient illness you know lice is not life-threatening um if you know they're coming in if we can go ahead and get them some medication you can get it and it won't be spread from child to child but you know sometimes the doctor's gonna they're gonna want to see okay there's actually they're not just you know their head doesn't just itch they don't have dandruff or whatever other issues a rash or whatever might be happening so we can put this in you can sounds really gross but you can see the little bugs moving around and we can get them something prescribed to get rid of those so that we're not spreading it to other children so that is all of our equipment and i'm going to try to now get our scope pulled up so that we can kind of show you what i mean by what we see when we do this so we can go into the ear there's some earwax there but that's normal you can look up in there and see a nice pretty eardrum we can focus in let's see focus in the wrong way there we go 
Look at that nice pretty eardrum. You can see all into the bone. There's no fluid. It's nice and shiny. That's a good eardrum right there. So we can look through at that. So then we swap to the general one. Say they had a rash. Now we can show it up close to the doctor and look down her arm. Or if they want to look in the eyes. You know, can you look up and down? Your eyeball. I just moved your eye. There you go. So like if they need to look at any of that. Open your mouth. Say ah, we can turn this light ah. on. So you can see at the back of that throat, say ah. ah. And that's what we see. Like you can see that. Or if you look into the hair, like you can literally see individual hairs. Like when you hold it in, you can see individual hairs. Wow. So if, see, she's here nice and clean, but if. We were looking for lots, like you would see the mitts, you would see the light, like you could see them moving. So at the conclusion of an appointment, I would always call back with the parent, say anything that if the doctor prescribed any medicines, tell them that, tell them where they can get it. If they can either, we can have them sent to the pharmacy of your choice, or we can just have them write it and you pick it up at your convenience. But I would always call back and say every little thing, even if it was just, well, I think she's just got some earwax built up. That's the only reason her ears hurting. Anything the doctor says, no matter how minuscule, I'll always get back and tell you those things. And that would be the end of our appointment. Ms. Meredith would go back to class and any prescriptions she needs would either be called in or sent. And she is back in class. She's seen her doctor. She's gotten her diagnosis and she is ready to get back to being 100%. So thank you, Meredith, for letting me use you as a demonstration. And thank you all for letting me speak with you a little bit about our telehealth program. Um, I hope it has been informative. Again, if you have any questions, my name is Morgan Castleberry. You can email me at telemedicine.pulaski.k12.ga.us. I know it's super long, but um, it does go straight to my phone. I always answer very quickly, and I hope you see all the potential and have a great time with our program that we are having.